Hello again, friends, and welcome to Divine Kingdom Ministries broadcast of The Purpose Driven Life. I want to welcome you again. I hope you are enjoying this beautiful summer day as I am. Again, once again, I'm outside enjoying nature and enjoying walking and my purpose, and I'm hoping that you are also. Um, I'm excited that now we are on week seven of this Purpose Driven Life series, and I invite you once again to go ahead and grab your book, grab your journal, um, grab any notes that you may have taken this week. I'm hoping that you have been spending time journaling. I'm hoping that you have been spending time writing down things that the Lord reveals to you about your purpose. I'm hoping that you are just spending time and enjoying spending time in God's presence. God created us um, for fellowship, for fellowship with him. And a part of going through this journey is learning also how to fellowship with the follow the father and enjoy the fellowship um that you have with him and him with you so we're going to take a few moments first of all we're going to open up in a word of prayer just like we normally do every week and then we're going to go ahead and get started on a quick review of chapters one through six and then we're going to jump right in to chapter seven which is what we're discussing today would you pray with me Father God, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you again for gathering us together. God, glory to your holy, most high name, O oh God. You are worthy of glory. Hallelujah. All creation rejoices and worships you, God. We rejoice and worship in who you are, Lord God. And we bless your name because you are so good to us, Father. Lord God, our words cannot even begin to explain how awesome you are, O oh God. We cannot even contain your glory and your majesty, but we just take time to say thank you for being outstanding standing for being so loving to us for taking care of us i want you right now to just begin to think of some of the things that god has done for you even from this from last week to this week and i want you to just praise him i'm going to give you just 15 seconds just take time reflect and lord we just glorify you so much and i want you to think even about the hard things and the hard places that you were in this week and the bible talks about in all things giving thanks and i just want you right now because it's going to set the stage for what we're discussing today to enter into his presence and just worship him i want you to tell him how much you love him how much we love you lord god how much we delight ourselves in you father god how much we delight lord god in your creation and who are, who you have created us to be glory to god lord god we give you all of our strengths we give you all of our faults we give you all of our weaknesses we give you this day all of us, dear God, and we ask that you would um, lead us by your spirit, Father God. We delight ourselves in you, Father God, and want you to delight yourselves in us. Father God, we thank you for the wonderful fellowship that we have with you and with your spirit. Glory to you, Lord Jesus, and we continue to want to have daily fellowship with your Holy Ghost, Father God, and your Holy Spirit. Guide us, lead us, direct our paths. We welcome you, Father God, to lead us even through this um, next segment of time and understanding walking in our purpose father god i pray for every person that's tuned in every family every person that is connected god in the name of jesus that whatever storms they would go through i rebuke the enemy even now in the name of jesus and i speak peace in the name of jesus that they would have the understanding that they need and the grace that they need oh god to be able to comprehend their purpose and still strive forth in spite of what they are going through at this time we thank you father god and we bless your holy name and once again we delight in you and delight in us in christ jesus name we give you thanks and everyone say together amen amen i love worshiping the father and that's really what one of the things that we're going to be talking about today um when we talk about the purpose driven life as you can see we are now on week seven but all of the weeks have just really set us up um one preceding the other for from under from the understanding in chapter one that it really does all begin with god when you're understanding your purpose when you're trying to understand what you were created for a lot of times people look outwardly and they look inwardly and they do these self-help things which are not bad but when you're starting to understanding your purpose you really have to start with the creator, and that means looking towards the person that created you, and that was God. And so it all starts with God, and that's what we learned in chapter 1. It's turning our focus heavenward and understanding that as we do that, God will begin to show us himself. And he will begin to not only show us himself, but he will begin to show us what we were created for. So it all does begin with God. The second thing, which was a very important revelation, was the understanding that you are not an accident. God created you for a specific purpose and that you are on this planet for a specific reason um it doesn't matter what the circumstances of your birth are you are not an accident 
God has a purpose, and he designed you special. The Bible talks about the fact that even the very hairs on your head are numbered. And with that, with that in mind, think about it. Somebody that would take that much care to designing you, to designing and knowing you inwardly and out, and knowing how they created you, all of the intricate details that make you you. You're not an accident. So understanding that everything um, in your life works together for good and that you, God, is specifically intentioned for you to be on this planet, in this earth realm. So that's what Chapter 2 taught us. Um, chapter 3, we discuss what drives your life. Um, a lot of people are driven by many different things. People can be driven by materialism. They could be driven by career. They could be driven by um, desire for status. A lot of things. A lot of people can be driven by rejection or hurt. It drives them. They can't let go of it. But what drives you? And it was a good chapter to just look inwardly to figure out really where you are and up until this point what has been driving you. Um, and if you were not being driven by God, Stopping to understand, okay, God, now I need you to redirect me, and I need you to be the one that's in the driver's seat, okay? And and you're the one that's driving my life, the force um, that which that I'm following after. What's what's driving you? What's pushing you? What pushes you to get up? What motivates you in the things that you? What drives you? Chapter 4 talks about the fact that you are an eternal being and you are made to last forever. Um, that when you step from this side of, of eternity into the next side of eternity, you will continue to exist forever and ever, whether you choose to exist um, with God or not with God, in a place that he intended, intended um, for himself, fellowship, and, and for his children, or in place that he, or in a place that he did not even intend for you, um, which we're discussing, of course, is hell. Um, where, um, where are you in that? And, and understanding that you are made to last forever. You are an eternal being. You're an eternal being, whether you want to accept that or not. You are. When the coffin is closed, or you, you know, if you decide to have cremation, when the final breath leaves your body. You do not cease to exist. You are an eternal being, and that's biblical. And so it starts to understand what you do on this side of eternity really does um, reflect or really will carry over into the outcome of what happens on the other side of eternity. So understanding that you are an eternal being, you're made to last forever, understanding that these decisions that you make now will have an eternal consequence. Also, Chapter 5 talks about seeing life from God's view understanding um, that everything, it doesn't matter what it was, what it is, or what has happened, when you look at it from God's view, from God's perspective, the good, the bad, the hurts, when you look at things from God's perspective, the times that God was quiet, the times that he was very present, he never left you. But when you look at your life through God's lenses, it puts all of the things, even the hard times, it puts it, um, it all becomes relevant. It all, all, it all, even if it doesn't make sense, it helps you to at least have peace and understand um, when you look at life from God's perspective and understand that he really loves you, no matter what happens, it helps you to be able to um, get through even the difficult times when you're looking at your life, not through your own understanding, but from the perspective of heaven, from the perspective of God. Amen. Last week, we talked about life being a temporary assignment that connects again to this whole thing of being made to last forever um life is a temporary assignment and what you do on this earth you need to wake up every single day motivated and excited about walking in your purpose because that is where you you're on a mission field right now um what you do right now really is a temporary assignment because it doesn't matter how long you live it's just a brief span of time in comparison with eternity which is eternal okay and that's what we discussed last week and in last week's chapter was the fact that life is a temporary assignment and, and understanding that life is not your own and is not your home. Your true home, your eternal home, is on the other side of this life. It is called eternity. And so this sets us up with our next chapter, which is the reason for everything. The reason for everything. Stay with me because, again, it's very important in this journey to build a very good foundation, and we're building a foundation, and we're going somewhere and helping you understand your purpose, the reason for everything. Romans chapter 11 and verse 36 says, everything comes from God alone. Everything lives by his power, and everything is for his glory. 
Proverbs 16 and 4 says this, the Lord made everything for his purpose. What is the glory of God? The glory of God, here is your first note. The glory of God is the essence of his nature. It is the weight of his importance. It is the radiance of his splendor. It is the demonstration of his power. And it is the atmosphere of his presence. Okay? It's the essence of his nature, the weight of his importance, the radiance of his splendor, the demonstration of his power, and the atmosphere of his presence. That is one of the reasons why I enjoy doing my um, broadcasts outside because I really do enjoy being in nature because I feel sometimes when I'm out looking at what God created, it helps me to understand everything that God creates. Even in, even in creation, it helps you understand the Father. He's creative. Um, he's orderly. Um, you see everything through his eyes, even from the very smallest ant to the very largest creature, understanding that there really is um, a reason for even every single thing and every single creature that was created. And we were created, we were created to bring glory to God. This is a very, very important part of this chapter is just taking time to understand Everything on earth glorifies God and was created to glorify God. Um, the animals, the plants, they are created. They are designed specifically to bring glory and honor to God. But the thing about human beings is we were created also to give glory to God, but God gave us free choice. And a lot of times as human beings, what we do is when we don't understand and accept the fact that we are created to give glory to God, we end up um, limiting our existence by just living for self and not understanding that very, very important part that your entire life should bring glory to the one that created you. It should bring glory to God. And we're going to talk today about how I can bring glory to God, how I can bring glory to God, even taking the example of Jesus Christ. And being here on earth, everything that he did, Jesus came to earth so we could fully understand God's glory. Here's the scripture from the Bible. It says the word became human and lived among us. We saw his glory, a glory full of grace and truth. And every time you research in the scripture, every miracle that Jesus did, everything that, that Jesus taught said, um, even in his downtime, so to speak, even in his fellowship, even in hanging out with his friends, even in fellowship with his friends, even in fishing and, and being on the boat and, and just hanging out with the disciples and the, everything that he did, he brought glory to God. When we search the scriptures, we start understanding that Jesus really did live life. Yes, he did ministry, but everything that he did in his regular day-to-day -day life, you might say, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not Jesus. I'm not doing the miracles every single day. I'm not. No, but you got to understand, even when you research his life, everything that he did, he brought glory to God with it. He brought glory to God with it. Here is a point for your notes. Living for God's glory is the greatest accomplishment we can accomplish with our lives. If Even in the very natural things that you do, the very the, the natural accomplishments that maybe you want to make in your, in your life, in your personal, um, your personal goals. Um, let's say, for example, let's, let's make this very relevant. Um, let's say maybe you have personal goals within your career. Okay, that's fine. As long as you are living for the God's glory in the greatest achievement, it's all going to him. In our greatest achievements, the glory go to him. And then the understanding of putting it into perspective that even with all of those earthly achievements that we may gain or may get, living for God's glory still becomes the greatest achievement of all of that. And even the earthly achievements that we have, understand me, they take on a new sense of fulfillment when you do it inside of the understanding that everything that I'm doing it's for God's glory. It's for God's glory. Maybe you are a person that likes to do activities or, um, you know, you might be, be, be in heavily into sports or you might be in a team or you may um, have something that you do as a hobby. Do it as unto the Lord and watch God get the glory out of it and even perhaps even cause you to excel in that thing that you enjoy so much because you're understanding that you were created for his glory and that everything that you are doing, you are living your life. For his glory and unto his glory. And what you'll start to find out that when you do that, you'll start to feel such a, um, a spirit of peace 
and fulfillment. We talk about wanting lives that are fulfilled and healthy. And, and you and you hear people talk all the time, I just feel so empty. I don't know what and it's because they are not living lives as unto the glory of God. Because when you do that, God created us, we explained a few chapters ago that God created us. Inside of us there is a little bit of a struggle or or an emptiness because because, safe, because we are in search of something, and what we really are in search of is him. And there will never be a sense of wholeness or fulfillment really within your life. There will always be something nagging there, something, something, something. No matter where you get, accomplishments happen, things, great things happen. You hear people say, oh, there's still something, there's still something. And what people try to do is they try to fill those voids. With things like drugs, with things like alcohol, with things like um, even activities, things that may not necessarily be bad things, shopping or activities or, or you know, they may, feel, um, they may feel themselves full of things that they think are filling the voice, but really what they're doing is they're chasing, they're chasing an attempt to make their life more meaningful. When all they really have to do is live their life, making up their mind and making up your mind, that all I want to do is bring God the glory, bring bring my creator the glory. And when I do that, when I live my life through his lenses, trying to bring him glory in every single thing I do, I'll start to sense such a sense of fulfillment. You'll start to sense such a sense of fulfillment in the things that you do. When anything in creation fulfills its purpose, it brings glory to God. When you fulfill your purpose, you bring glory to God. When you walk in your purpose every day, you bring glory to God. On your updates, this is why it's so important to understand what drives you. This is why it's so important to know your purpose because when you live a purpose-driven life, it doesn't matter what chaos the world may bring. You are focused and you are driven and you are working in your purpose. And as long as you are working in your purpose and living a life that's unto the Lord in every single thing that you do, you're bringing him glory. You're bringing him glory, and you'll start to sense a more fulfilled and peaceful life. So how can I bring glory to God? Understanding that everything in creation already brings glory to God. How can my life, how can your life bring glory to God? Well, here's the first one, and you can write this down. We bring glory to God by worshiping him. We bring glory to God by worshiping him. C.S. Lewis, he is a wonderful, um, wonderful, wonderful author. Um, and many of you have read his books or perhaps even um, seen movies based on um, some of the books that he's written. But he makes this statement. In commanding us to glorify him, God is inviting us to enjoy him. We talked about, the again, that sense of fulfillment, true joy. And I'm speaking perhaps to someone today that it, you know, is you know that it maybe really is is looking for something to bring them joy. You're looking for that something that brings you an eternal sense of joy, and you might have been even struggling with areas or avenues where you don't have complete peace. It's in the fulfillment of God's word. It's in His presence. It's in worshiping Him. And not just a one-time thing, but a daily thing. Um, How do I worship God? Does worship mean just standing up and singing a song and praying? No. You worship him out of your lifestyle. Everything that you do, you do unto the glory of God. I had had a friend. Well, actually, it was more like um, a mentor, a mentor in the gospel some years ago. She said to me, everything that you do, you do to the glory of God. And I repeat that statement because it is such... When you do things as unto the glory of God, when you do it, does, then it will not matter to you. You lose the fear of man's opinion when you do things unto the glory of God. You lose the fear of what if I fail? What if I mess up? Because somebody's feeling that. You lose that fear when you do things in light of God. I simply want to bring glory, and I simply want to bring honor. To you, when you when you live your life as unto God, wanting to worship Him and fellowship Him, what it, it, and again I say to you, it's not worship is not just it is the day to day of singing and, and praising and entering into His presence, but it's also the concept of understanding that my very life is a worship 
unto God. It is an enjoyment as unto the Father. God meant for you to enjoy your life, but he meant for you to live your life according to his word and unto him. That's how you experience life that is full of joy. What is the second way that you bring glory to God? Hallelujah. We bring glory to God by loving other believers. We bring glory to God by loving other believers. And sometimes this can be a little bit difficult. This can be a little bit challenging. Um, Because when you are dealing with other people, you're dealing with other personalities, you're dealing with other mindsets, and God created us, um, Christian or non-Christian, he created us all very differently. But when you were born again, you became a part of God's family. You you became a part of a family. You might say, I may not, I don't know what it means to be a part of a family. Or maybe you're in a family that you guys are at each other all the time and, you know, you guys are struggling with different things all the time. But you were created to be a part of God's family. And when you become a Christian, you immediately join God's family. You join God's family, and when you join God's family, you bring him glory by loving other believers. You may not always agree with them. You may not always um, uh, get along with them in every single thing. Sometimes you may have to pray, God, you have to help me with this person. But when you start, again, seeing them also, through God's eyes, you bring glory to God by loving them and asking God how to love them even the more, even people within your family, asking God to show you how to love them because God created them. And God loves them. And guess what? You need to be loved as well. And so you want God to be able to show them how to love you. So we bring glory to God by loving other believers. Let's go on. We bring glory to God by becoming like Christ. By becoming like Christ. Every single day, we are to be shaped and transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Does that mean I wake up and I put my feet on the ground in the morning and I'm Jesus Christ? No. That means that every day, my purpose, my prayer, and my striving in every single thing that I do, um, several times, I want to be like Christ. It is a process. It is a perfecting process. It is a perfecting process. That is something that you could put in your notes. Becoming like Christ is a perfecting process. It is a process. That means it's not something that takes place overnight. It's a process. I love it when I even hear older Christians. When I say older Christians, I mean people that might have been saved for 20, 30, 40, 60 years, and they may be in their 70s or in their 80s, and they're seeing, saying things like, I, you know, I still desire to be like Christ. I, I want to be perfected. That, to me, is awesome. That, to me, is wonderful because that says to me, you never get too old to learn how to become in the image, hallelujah, of Christ. That blesses me. That blesses me because it lets me know and it should let you know that you are forever being changed into the image of Jesus Christ. We bring glory to God by becoming like Christ. That should be your daily prayer. Jesus, I want to be like you. I want to be like Christ in in the way that I think, in the way that I function, in the way that I treat other people. I want to be like Jesus Christ. I want my life to bring glory to him. I want the things that I say to bring glory to him. I want the things that I do to bring glory to him. And when I change, and, and when this is my driving mindset, it shapes the way even um, I see others and the way I see life. We have two more things here. We bring glory to God by serving others with you get your, our gifts. Many of you are gifted in many things. Some of you are gifted singers or artists. You're talented in some, in, some, in, 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 in some type of capacity. Some of you have multiple talents. Some of you, I, I mean, I have heard, you know, I don't really know what my talent or gifting is, but everybody has something that God has given them or gifting in. Perhaps you are gifted in the, in the, in the gift of service. Not everybody can be a server. Not everybody is willing to and enjoys being of service to others that is a gift from God some people have the gift um, of being an exhorter or being somebody that just encourages do you know what an awesome gift that is especially in a day and time like like it is right now when people are becoming hurt and where people are discouraged discouraged to have the gift of just encouragement you can always put a spin on everything you can see a positive side of everything that is a gift and you got to start understanding and ask God to help you to find a place to plug yourself in in a way that you can bring glory to God by serving 
others with your gifts. You are wired the way you are wired because God wired you that way. Many of you are organizers. You think fast. You're great with money. You may be able to even help um, help people get organized or organize, um, uh, help them to be able to organize their businesses, their lives, their churches, their ministries. You are great with organizing. Those are God-given gifts and talents. So using those gifts and talents to bring glory to to God. Many of you are teachers. All of those types of things, you're using the gifts, what you are created for in a service to others because that natural ability to do that, that's a God-given gift. We bring glory to God by telling very simple concepts, by telling others about him, what I'm doing here with you today. Go go do it at work. Go do it at um as you hang out at the gym, at the grocery store, you bring glory to God with your life, with your li- with your with the fruit of your lips. Your lips are an instrument. God wants you to express His love and His purposes. He does not want you to keep it a secret. If you have a wonderful gift, if somebody has just given you the most precious thing that you have ever seen or known, would you keep it a secret? It'd be kind of hard to. And God wants you to see your life and your relationship with him as just that. Don't keep it a secret. Tell people about him. Tell people how much you love him. As as he begins to show you things and show you things about himself and show you things about his nature, I, I love new believers and their excitement. I love that because that passion and that fire is something that excites God. And I want you to just like to become just like that. Become a person that does not mind sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, just telling people about God, just, you know, you know what, when someone says, you know what, you look good today, you know what, thank you, God, you know, God, God, you know, really helped, he helped me, you know, he helped me, man, God, I have to give God the glory, oh, you look really nice today, thank you very much, you know, I give God the glory, and I'm not saying that you have to go overboard, Um, I'm giving you an example, but my point is just always find opportunities and ways in which Even through your lifestyle, you find ways to just tell people that the way that you are and what makes you unique and what makes you you is because God designed you and made you to be the way that you are. Okay? All righty. Amen. So I want to go ahead and give you your points to ponder for this week. Points to ponder is it is all about him. Romans 11 and 36, as we begin to close, for everything comes from God alone. Everything lives by his power and everything, everything is made for his glory. Here is your question to consider in your journal for this week. Where in my daily routine can I become more aware of God's glory? I want to give you some scriptures that you can meditate on for this week. I love using my Purpose Driven uh, Life Daily Devotional. But if you, in case you don't have this, you may just have the, the regular book. I um, like to give you these scriptures to meditate on for the week also. Um, Here you go. I'm just going to give you the list. Proverbs 16 and 4. The Lord has made everything for his own purpose. Psalms 19 and 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. Revelations 21 and 23. Revelations 4 and 11. Isaiah 47 and 7. Isaiah 60 and 1. Hebrews 1 and 3. John 1 and 14. John 17 and 4, and John 12, verses 27 through 28. And what a great thing to do with these scriptures that I give you is it gives you a great opportunity to find one of those scriptures per day until we meet next week and meditate on it. It could be a point of your t- of, of, um, in your journal as you get an understanding of what those scriptures mean, kind of just jotting it down, praying it in, into your life, praying about it. Um, that's a great way to use the these daily devotionals. Let me go ahead and pray with you before we close today. Um, especially at this moment in time, I want to pray for those that may not know Jesus Christ. And I want to, I would not close this broadcast without giving you an opportunity to know the person that I have been bragging about throughout this entire 30-minute broadcast. If you don't know Jesus Christ and you want to know him, you want to understand what this is all about, why I'm so excited about and, and, and so in love with God, my Father. I, I walk around, and I because I, I do. I love the Lord. I love who he is to me. I want you to know him in that same way. Would you pray with me? Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you and I'm asking you to save me of my sin. I know that I'm a sinner, but I want to be saved. I recognize that I have shortcomings and faults, but I understand also that this is why Jesus came, to save me 
to cleanse me of all, of all unrighteousness. I understand that from this moment forth, there's no condemnation. There's no need to be sad or depressed about anything that I've done. Because, Jesus, you have taken it all and you have washed it. You have cut it, covered it under the blood of the Lamb as I pray this prayer. Forgive me for my sins, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Wash me. Save me. Change me. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my friend. Make me today a new creation in you. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And set aside for me a special seat in heaven with you. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. And I give you glory and praise. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Welcome to the kingdom of God. If you prayed that with me today, would you please email me and write to me at kingdomproblemsolvers.org. That is our direct ministry email. And if you do, I will be sure to get back to you with some materials that can help you take you a little bit deeper into your relationship with the Lord. Amen. Until next week, I want you to go forth doing what? Living, walking, breathing in your purpose 